Hello guys and welcome back to the FIFA 23 2023 World Cup. As you know, this is the part two of the European qualifiers episode. Uh, we have Group D, Group E and the playoffs in this episode. And then that completes all the qualifiers, which is very nice indeed. In Group D, we'll get straight onto it. We have Germany, uh, Grenoble Foot 38, who are Greece. Hungary, Italy, uh, Montpellier, who are Montenegro, uh, Northern Ireland, and Sweden. So only seven teams in this league. Um, we go down to seven now for the rest of the qualifiers. Um, so yeah, we'll get straight to the halfway point um, and see where we as Germany will end up. Obviously, Germany are probably the favourites depending on Italy's performance it, it, it obviously varies Italy didn't qualify for the latest World Cup so it'd be interesting to see really um, so let's get on to the midway point um, six games in and see how we do so we've made it to the halfway point in this league as you can see uh, Italy are on top with 14 points Germany us in second Sweden look to be going strong for that third place at the moment. Hungary, three points behind them. Um, we've then got Northern Ireland in fifth. Montenegro in sixth. And Greece down at the bottom, which is a bit of a surprise. Greece is not a bad side, to be fair. But that's the way it goes. Um, so, yeah. Still six games left to play for everybody, so anything can happen. Um, but obviously for the favourites, Italy and Germany, it's looking quite good. Uh, there won't be an upset like last episode with uh, France crash crashing out completely. Uh, but everything's still to play for. Um, let's get over to the um, top scorers. So we have Immobile on top, five goals in six games, very good indeed. Saloy from Hungary in second position at the moment. Uh, a few players there on three, uh, and then many, many players on two and obviously one. Even Ibrahimovic there is sliding in at the bottom there in 14th. Um, so yeah, let's get to the last game of the season and see what's to play for. Um, we'll be right back. So here we are to the near enough last game of the season, as uh, well for us anyway, um, the rest of the league has uh, one, two more games left to be fair, but Greece uh, have finished near enough on the bottom there. So um, let's see how we get on, obviously with Italy having two games anything can happen, uh, Hungary and Sweden are also going to be battling it out there to see what on earth they can get. Uh, out of that third place, see if they can get into the playoff rounds. Uh, Northern Ireland, obviously, Montenegro and Greece are down and out. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's sim this game quickly and uh, see what the final results are. I'm not going to play it because there's not much point. Um, oh, I am. So I'm going to play this game. Obviously, we're against Italy, so I think it'll be worth it, even though they have another game to play. Um, it's it could give us some nice goal difference or something like that. So we'll have a look. Um, let's get on to the game. So we are on the with the begins. game here. It kicks off. Obviously, Germany versus Italy. Biggest game of the tournament. Let's see who finishes top near enough. Um, although vision. Italy have one more game in hand, um, anything can happen. Threat. So Germany need to win. If Germany Eli don't win, basically Italy go top. Um, and as I say that. Müller gets a goal. Just what we like to see. 1-0 uh, up. Uh, let's see how we get on for the rest of the game. Italy playing it through nicely here. What a ball around the back here. Are they going to get a strike? They do. They get the goal. Zero Immobile gets the goal. Let's see how we get on. Italy playing it nicely out the back here. And that's it. That is the final whistle. 1 1. Unfortunately, that probably means that Italy are going to finish top. Let's go have a look at the table, see how we get on. So, as predicted, Italy finished top of Group D. Germany go through there with 24 points. Nice indeed, that. Um, conceding 
Uh, the least out of everybody though goal difference nice and high Hungary managed to get the playoff spot unfortunately Sweden and Ibrahimovic do not get there Northern Ireland finishing fifth Greece getting above Montenegro there uh, for the last stage of the uh, fixtures uh, so yeah we'll go have a look at the player statistics quickly before we get on to group E Player statistics now, um, Immobile getting 10 goals in 12, absolutely dominating the score sheets there in all honesty. Surprisingly, Germany's midfield of Gundogan and Goretzka doing very well there uh, in the scoring up front. Müller also making an appearance there, uh, the likes of Lavery for Northern Ireland doing well, Saloy for Hungary. Um, obviously, Montenegro's at Durdovic. Um, Isaac from Sweden uh, unfortunately we don't see um, Ibrahimovic getting on there uh, but yeah let's get on to the assist assist we see a Barella up there with five for Italy uh, very nice indeed Tony Cruz Goretzka also getting on there he must be one of the players of the uh, tournament there uh, Hungary showing uh, dominance up there as well Nagy Saloy Slobozalai and Nego doing very well. Jovetic there, <laughs> nice to see him, obviously. Been around for a while as that boy. Um, so yeah, let's get on to the clean sheets. Unsurprisingly, Manuel Neuer up there with three. Only three in 12. It's a bit disappointing, really, for near enough the best goalkeeper in the world. Um, Golaski there, nice appearance from him. Uh, playing 12, 12 games, getting two. Uh, it looks like Northern Ireland mixed up the goalkeeper front. Um, Peacock Farrell getting four. Only four games, so uh, obviously one, a sh one clean sheet. And uh, it looks like Montenegro also did the same, to be fair. So did Greece. Um, so yeah, doing exactly the same there. Uh, let's get on to the naughty boys. You had a card here, uh, Zaniolo for Italy, getting uh, the most yellow cards there. Obviously, there are multiple players down uh, with two. Uh, to, mo to point out, Kulusevski, um, Lachetti, Olsen from Sweden. So, yeah, players on there. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, bad, bad boys. Four overall, Rudiger, obviously, we knew already about him. And Nabry as well, I already knew about him as well. Uh, Politano from Italy and Styles from Hungary. So pretty interesting but yeah that's the way it goes so that finishes off group d we obviously know who's going through italy uh, germany and hungary make that playoff position uh, to join that, that league so we are now going to go into the um group e um so i will see you there Welcome to the last group of Europe. We have seven teams again here. As you can see, two high rowers here, Croatia and Spain. Um, we're looking at obviously being Spain here. So we've got Croatia, Iceland, Poland. New York Red Bulls are the only team made by me uh, in this episode. Uh, they're Bulgaria. Uh, Romania, Scotland and obviously Spain as previously mentioned um, so yeah we're going to get straight to the midway point six games in and uh, see how the league table plays so we get to the halfway point here pretty quickly there um, Spain obviously us doing very well 1-5 drawn 1 lost none only conceded 5 goals which is nice to see Poland and Scotland seem to be battling it out at the moment. Uh, Croatia not far behind them. Croatia's a bit disappointing performance from them. Uh, Romania doing well in fifth. Obviously Bulgaria in sixth and Iceland down down in last not doing great there. Um, so let's have a quick look at the uh, midway um, top scorers. So at the halfway point, Kramaric is looking good. Eight goals in six games. That is impressive there from the Croatian striker. Uh, Lewandowski, six in six. Not a surprise there for Poland. Uh, Moreno doing very well there for us. Uh, five goals in six. Gold from Scotland, four goals in six. And then Aspas also there. 
some players on three um, and then players down on two down there as well so yeah so let's get to the last game of this group um, and see if there's anything to play for uh, once we get to that point so here we are back at the last game of the season as you can see there is actually now nothing to play for uh, big surprises though um, Croatia have crashed out even with a win against Romania uh, wasn't enough uh, when they play Poland uh, it still won't make a difference uh, they won't go above Scotland for the playoff so obviously we go through in first um, Poland in second um, and third goes Scotland so let's just play through these last few games and uh, we'll see what the final points and that are so here we are with the last uh, table and last qualifying round before we go to the playoffs uh, of this we have obviously us up in 34 points 1 11 drew 1 we've only conceded 9 that is immense in 12 games uh, Poland get the automatic uh, space there Scotland go through to the playoff round which is nice to see uh, Croatia did end up winning their last game uh, but that saw them only get one point behind Scotland so narrowly missing out obviously they, they beat Iceland who did not improve since the halfway point they have been absolutely shocking uh, Romania uh, down in fifth and Bulgaria in sixth so yeah that's the uh, last of them through we're going to get on to the playoff rounds now. Um, so obviously every team that has finished in third position um, will be battling out in a league and the top two teams will be qualifying for the World Cup. And then that is qualifying rounds over. So let's get on to that. Ow. Before I, before I do that, I didn't go for any of these. So top scorers, Moreno, 9 and 12. Also, Kramovic, also 9 and 12. He only scored one more in the last six games. A bit disappointing. And that's obviously why they didn't get up. Lewandowski, uh, 8 and 12. Iago Aspas, uh, they're also doing very well. Gold for Scotland, getting them goals. Adams as well. Uh, Parejo also doing very well for Spain. Uh, any other standout names? Iceland players there. Russell for Scotland, Hadji for Romania. Um, so yeah, let's get into the assists. Lewandowski tops that, six assists in 12 games, so one every other. Uh, Thiago, Parejo, Moreno also getting on there for Spain. Um, Modric there, as you can see, only getting two, uh, which might have been the downfall of Croatia. All the games quite close together, and obviously he's getting on a bit, so that might be what it is. If that is McGregor, the goalkeeper in 15th that is class i'm not sure it will be but if it is that's hilarious um onto cl onto clean sheets anyway so here we are with the clean sheets uh david de gea on five uh, which is understandable um Szczesny in second with three and the romanian croatian goalkeepers drawing there let's go on to yellows yellow card we have palasic for croatia uh, up there in three and then obviously plenty of players on two and one there let's go have a look at the real naughty boys only two uh mcgregor for scotland and bajansen let's just have a quick look to see if that mcgregor is um the goalkeeper for scotland so no it's not uh there must be another mcgregor there because that's alan mcgregor played seven they played all the goalkeepers though and um, where's yeah he's this lad here callum and mcgregor so yeah it's just the way it goes so yeah um let's get on to um the playoff so here we are in the playoff round as you know every third place team from the five qualifying rounds got into this division the top two are going to go through so we have wales ukraine Sovete, who are serbia scotland and hungary obviously only f there is five teams and only two places so they're gonna have to battle it out it looks like they've already started the season without me and um, so we're going to try catch up here 
Wales and the Ukraine looking quite nicely here for them. Scotland and Hungary uh, have lost. It's nice to see two uh, Great Britain nations in this as well. It'd be good to see both of them go through. Obviously the Ukraine, obviously in a situation in the world at the moment, would be nice to see through. I went for uh, Serbia because they are the best team, so I always pick the best team just to make it fair. Um, and then Hungary down in uh, there. A bit of an outsider, but you never know. You never know. So let's get to the midway point. Um, four games in, and we'll, we'll see how we get on. So we reached the halfway point. It is very bloody tight. You can see here that three of us are on seven points. Serbia, Ukraine, and Scotland. Wales and Hungary aren't that far behind on four and three. Um, so it's it's all to play for in all honesty. Um, let's have a look at the top scorers at the midway point. Obviously, there's not been that many goals. There's only been four games for each team. So let's have a quick look. So top scorer in the whole thing so far is Moore for Wales. Uh, he then got uh, his joint, actually, with Tuganov from the Ukraine. Uh, Adams and Saloy up there as well. And then a few on two and uh, many on one. So we're going to go now to the last game of the season and we'll see who on earth um, is going to get through and what there is left to play for. So we're at the last game of this here. Serbia have confirmed their place uh, in there. No matter what happens, um, they're going through. We've then got Scotland down in second. And then all the other teams have got a game in hand on them, uh, only on seven. So honestly, it could be anybody. But we know Serbia are through. Let's play our game and then see what happens. We have Wales, so I think we're going to play it. Um, we'll show it on the screen and then we'll see what happens with the rest of them right we'll jump to the result then that was a bit boring I thought it was going to let us do it but yeah 3-0 so that's Wales not through unfortunately um, plenty of players on the score sheet there let's see what happened wow obviously Serbia go through Hungary take that place Hungary were bottom at the halfway point and they have managed to pull away with that last place unbelievably and they have the same goal difference as Scotland but they've scored more goals they've scored 12 goals instead of the other teams 10 so that is why that has happened <laughs> um, yeah it's actually quite funny that Serbia are the only team <laughs> with uh, positive goal difference the rest have negative so it shows how good Serbia were really and not really fit for this group um, the rest of them very very tight and quite impressive to be fair but yeah Hungary managed to get the last spot so let's have a look at the uh, play statistics and we'll do a little bit of a wrap up so here we are with the scorers. Uh, you can see Moore still out on top. Didn't actually score any more, I don't think. I'm sure he was on five when we last checked. Same with Tizganokov. Uh, Vlahovic from Serbia is on there, as well as Tadic, quite high. Uh, Gold Adams, nice to see. Uh, Yarmachuk uh, from the Ukraine there. You can just about see at the bottom or near the bottom, Gareth Bale there, only scoring one, which is disappointing in all honesty. Um, but yeah, that is the top scorers. Let's get on to the assists. You can see that Kostic from Serbia gets four assists. Uh, Aaron Ramsey makes it onto the list with two, as, long, as well as Wilson. Uh, Gareth Bale also on the list. Nastasic also getting on there. Um, Dimitrovic also making the list. I believe he's a goalkeeper. He actually got injured. Um, they had to play the second in command. Luckily, it didn't make a difference for him. Uh, let's get on to the clean sheets now and we'll see how they perform. Yep, so you can see Payatov got two. Uh, Stojkovic got two as well. He was the uh, backup goalkeeper. Um, and Ward getting one and also uh, Servete getting one as well. Um, so that's pretty good indeed. Um, obviously, we are now completely 
out of uh, fun information let's get on to the naughty boys so the naughty boys we have um, a few on two and many on one just to pick out some names obviously Goodelge at the top Nigo, uh, Matic, Tadic, Auburn uh, and Robertson there as well naughty boy down in uh, number 14 so let's get on to the red cards just the one Hungary had Schaefer uh, get one red card and played three matches and that is it we are completely done so just a quick recap um, from what we've had in Europe um, as you know we had Belgium the Netherlands go through Ukraine made it to the playoffs we also had Portugal and Austria go through and Wales made it to the playoffs uh, we had England and the Czech Republic go through uh, Serbia went to the playoffs we then had Italy and Germany go through Hungary made it to the playoffs we then had Spain and Poland go through and Scotland made it to the playoffs obviously in the playoffs we've just had them we know that coming from that was Serbia and Hungary so they are the teams to go into the 2023 uh, FIFA 23 World Cup so looking at the group tables let's have a bit of a rundown of what we're going to see in the World Cup so in group A we have Belgium Morocco the Czech Republic and Peru in group B we have Portugal Brazil Algeria and Qatar in group C we have England Poland USA and the Democratic Republic of Congo we also have in group D Argentina the Netherlands Georgia and Costa Rica in Group E, we have Spain, Colombia, Senegal, and Australia. In Group F, we have Uruguay, Austria, rest of Africa, Serbia. And then in Group G, we have Italy, Ghana, South Korea, and Hungary. And then last group in Group H, we have Mexico, Germany, Cameroon, and China. So that makes up the end of the qualifying round. We will obviously next episode be starting the World Cup. Obviously I need to get all that set up. None of it's made yet so we will get into that. But thank you so much for watching uh, the qualifying rounds if you have. I know they're not getting great views at the moment but just the way it goes. So we'll get through it and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.